It's a pleasure to be here, and I'd like to tell you why eating a bad diet ages you more rapidly. And I think that applies to most of the world. So, this is your metabolism. So, to run your metabolism, what do you need? You need fuel, and so you eat carbohydrate and protein, and you burn it to get uh, to make ATP, and that's uh, so you're pulling four electrons off your fuel, adding them to oxygen, you make water, and that's the process that generates kilos of ATP in your body every day. But you need something else. You need about 40 micronutrients, and these are substances you need to get in your diet to be coenzymes for all these different pathways. Well, about 30 vitamins and minerals, about 15 minerals, about 15 vitamins, and then you need some essential amino acids to make your protein and a couple of essential fatty acids. You don't get any one of these, you die. So the whole purpose of a balanced diet is to get all of them, and what I'm going to tell you is when you don't get enough, you're trashing some metabolic pathway. And I'll explain how nature works on that. So these are the uh, micronutrients. The ones I'll concentrate on. Let's see. Is this? A, we have a, a laser pointer. It's not very, but anyway, the middle column is about, there are about 15 minerals and about 15 vitamins, and those are the ones I'm going to concentrate on. So you don't get any one, you die. But how much do we need? And I think we don't have a clue. So the committees tell you EARs and RDAs, but it's all based on short term. And what I'm going to tell you is what happens when you're short of any vitamin or mineral it's accelerating your aging in some particular way. Thank you. Ah, okay. So these are the vitamins, minerals, and then essential amino acids, and then omega-3s and omega-6s. Okay. Are we getting enough? And by the current standards, we're not. The standards are going to be different when we start looking at long-term things. So this, uh, there are two numbers most of you probably know that the committees, the official committees set, the EAR and the RDA. The EAR is some distribution in the population, and if you're below the EAR, that's the measure of inadequacy. So they say you're deficient if you're below the EAR. And then they set the RDA at two standard devi deviations above the EAR. So really the EAR is a key number. And it's all based on short term, but even on that, we know menstruating women are losing a lot of iron, and 16% of American women are below the EAR for iron. Magnesium, we're talking about 56% of the whole U.S. population. Where do you get magnesium? It's in the center of the chlorophyll molecule. So anything green has magnesium. You eat a big plate of spinach, and you're getting your magnesium. Here's to spinach. And, uh, and then uh, nuts are very healthy food. Nuts have a fair amount of calcium and magnesium in them. But we're clearly not up to snuff. And zinc, zinc is a, in 2,000 proteins with zinc fingers, copper zinc, SOD. What happens when you don't have enough zinc? And we're talking about 12% of the population. This isn't a part per billion of pesticide that hypothetically might do us some damage sometimes, there's no real evidence it does, but uh, this is, we're talking about some appreciable percent of the population, and vitamin B6, with uh, elderly women, close to half of them, folate, now they're fortifying the flour with folate, but still we have a sizable percentage 
vitamin E, practically everybody, vitamin C, about a third of people. And then they haven't said EARs, though they just did for D and calcium, but I haven't changed my slide yet. For, we're very low in D and K and calcium, potassium, and I can't read that from this angle and whatever this is. Anyway, uh, so we're not eating a healthy diet. We're eating too much refined food with sugar. The leading source of calories in the United States is sugary soft drinks, 40 grams of sugar and no nutritive value. So we're starving. Even though we're all getting fat, we're starving for vitamins and minerals. So what happens when you're low? And that's what I'm gonna, I've been working on and I'd like to tell you about. So, these are some red blood cells and an occasional white cell. Uh, you all know red blood cells don't have any DNA. But if you take a mouse and you stain it for, with a fluorescent reagent for DNA, one in 2,000 red blood cells lights up. Turns out, when you extrude the nucleus to make the red blood cell, if there's a chromosome break, a little piece of chromosome gets left behind and you can stain for it. You irradiate the mice, you get a nice dose response. So a fellow named Jim McGregor back in 1980s was looking at this micronucleus test in mice and looking at irradiating them and getting dose response and then looking at the effect of caffeine on DNA repair. He came to my lab on sabbatical, so I learned about all this stuff. And one day, he accidentally found that somebody had left a vitamin out of the vitamin mix and all his control mice were trashed. They were all full of chromosome breaks. And he tracked it down to the missing vitamin was folic acid. He did a dose response on folic acid. And it was just like radiation. 